Yo, 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 welcome back to another Biomont Weekly. In this episode, you'll be going on site rounds with Kane. You're gonna be doing site rounds with me, looking for new potential property acquisitions. We'll also be going back to our listed building to film some marketing content, where we'll show you exactly how I do our long form sales and marketing. It'll be an interesting thing to watch. And we're looking at new areas, and we'll show you how we appraise new areas for their investment viability. Enjoy the episode, subscribe. We're back here at this property. We're getting planning to turn it into a load of apartments. It's a listed building, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we've got Jay here. Yo, 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 yo. Because yo. we're going to shoot a whole load of before content um, showing the property in its current state and plans that we're going to do with it, things like that, to store this content for eight, nine, ten months' time until the project's actually finished. So we've been starting to do this on the bigger schemes where we're trying to get as much marketing con content as possible. Some of it is weekly vlogs, some of it is stuff we can churn out quickly, some of it we need to kind of do this forward investment into the content so that when the end finishes here, we can layer over before and after content that will just make for a much better marketing piece compared to if we were just film the end product, for example. Yo, 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 welcome back to another before and after video of this huge Victorian terrace split over four floors. Skirting boards they are worried about, the paneling around the windows, the door frame, and even the original doors. Hello, we're back. We're dropping the loft now. Breasts have all been took out. Come through here, same again in here. All this area is to take out still. That's going to come out today. A lot of brick in the backyard there. I'll take these upstairs so you can have a look. Don't drop down those stairs, lads. Don't kill me, or you won't be getting paid. Craig, the top drafters here. Remember what we done last time? We dropped a couple of cars off it. All right, is that what you're yeah, doing? Yeah. Just do that here again for me, Craig. Top man. Because we're going to get so much room. We're going to put the roof structure and the steels back here now. We can leave that section of the breast up. But obviously, you're going to get more floor area as well. So these lads dropping all these. We're going to take these down. We're going to reduce that section of wall. That'll all be done today. Next week, we're going to get the steels in. This is going to be fun. Uh, sort of back end of the week, we'll start getting some timbers on site. Start putting the floors in, get the stairs in. The week after the dry line is here, putting all the walls up. Thank you very much. We've got Cat in the back office. Here's Cat. Cat's in the back office, yeah. And she needs to make sure that that back office is bulletproof in terms of admin tasks, keeping on top of documents, receipts, all other kinds of bits and bobs. There's so much paperwork and other bullshit that comes into it that if she's not strong, then we're not organized and the whole rest of it goes to shit as well. So we need to organize Cat first. Then once you organize Cat, that then filters through to Adam, our main site manager, because uh, there's also Jeff as well, and also Kane and she can then manage their diaries more effectively, keep them accountable more for given tasks that they need to repeat week on week uh, and ensure that she's got all of her affairs in order. The only way to tackle this, because Catherine performs a myriad of tasks, is to go through, which is exactly what I did, for about six hours with Catherine and Steve and highlight everything she does and then split it into nominal tasks and then into core tasks. Well done, sir. And with that, we then itemized all those tasks. The core tasks are not only tasks that she needs to be doing, and they're the fundamental tasks, or they are the cost beneficial tasks, things like buying, buying and procurement, where if she can get better rates on materials, even a small percentage difference on our material costs could be the difference of hundreds of thousands of pounds over a fiscal year. But we had her doing lots of these nominal tasks without enough direction, without enough structure. A construction business is a moving beast and we've been flipping around our systems to try and get ourselves more efficient, but in doing so, you make yourself more messy first. So it gets worse before it gets better. So we had to list out all of these tasks and then go through and create a whole new weekly diary for Catherine. And then we had to manage that into different hours and clear slots in the week to ensure we could get her into doing and performing these core tasks by allowing for three, four hour slots in the week spread out where she can tackle things like the Builder Trend system, which we're using now to manage all the programs on our site, things like procurement uh, and material tendering and things like that. Now we've laid on top of that Kane's ones as well and Steve, but Steve's much more in the sourcing and acquisition side of the business, but he does roll over into construction for certain responsibilities. 
um, to keep the projects on track and things like that. And then Kane's got these core functions as well. Now, some tasks are ad hoc. Some of them aren't every week. Some of them come in every now and then, like the bill of quantities or issuing contracts for clients. So we need to make sure there's gaps in the diary to ensure that those things can be done at their given times as well, but that we don't disrupt the core things that are fixed into the diary and that don't move. But we also need to make sure some of Kane's tasks need to be layered into Catherine's tasks like procurement so that Catherine can learn the procurement process better and utilize Kane for that relationship with those suppliers. And then also understand the material tendering list and all the different nuances between screw sizes, timbers, and things like that. I know you guys have seen this one quite a bit in recent vlogs, but maybe that's a good thing because you can sort of see the gradual updates. So we've got bathrooms starting to go in now. Whitewash down here. Check on this extension. Can't see it from here, but let me block this up. Check upstairs. Radio's on. Okay, these are looking more progressed. Showers, boarding starting to go on. On suites getting on. Whitewashed in here. Second fix pretty much ready. Another shower in on its legs. Beauty, foul. This room, not much really needs to be done, but you can see they have come in and put the king span into So we are then insulating the pitched aspect of the roof. And then this one's already done anyway. Massive dormer extension on it. Have we got the cladding on? No. But so it's, a different, it's not like plasterboard. It's a whole different thing for a fire performance. Uh, that the cladding then goes onto to give it its water resistance as well. We're a couple of weeks away from then just being able to close out top down, work our way back out the building but the extension and the loft conversion have kind of fucked us on this one, uh, where we had to move lads around. And this is the problem with, when you're running lots of sites, labor movement is quite a tricky thing to, to manage, but we need to make sure we're running a good quantum of sites because we have a critical mass that we must uphold. Otherwise our preliminary overheads start to crater into uh, operational profits. We're going under. Which cannot happen, so we need to keep sites moving. This is our own site. We use our own sites as buffers. So when we've got surplus lads, we can push them onto our own sites. When we've got a constraint of lads, we'll keep them off our sites and keep them on client sites. Actually works much better that way. I know that people out there think intuitively we prioritize our own sites, but no, we actually wouldn't because we don't take out much debt out against these sites, so the debt cost is minimal. And it's better for us to keep our lads as productive as possible in terms of the rate we charge out on client sites compared to us doing it at cost on our own sites. So it's better to keep, otherwise the business starts to have operational profit issues and cash flow issues. So it's really important we keep the two stable and we can do that by having our own sites in tandem. It actually gives us more liquidity in a way for allocating resources. Um, and this is a perfect example, this one where our structural lads, we had to put on another site whilst this loft was getting done by our joiners, but really we wanted the extension done at the same time. Because the extension wasn't done at the same time, it's pissed out our, our schedule of works, which then means we can't have the lads come in and close out the second fix electrics and the plastering and stuff. Otherwise they're coming back and forward to sites, which is more expensive. Lots to think about, construction is a beast. But this property now has been stripped of its chimney breasts. Uh, we're knocking off all the skirts, arcs, doors, stuff like that, and ready for our ensuite placements. But we just get rid of breasts as a standard now. Very few properties where we not get rid of the breasts in. We've pulled out the stairs as well. So there was some stairs here uh, leading up to the top, which creates a much better space, not only for the top floor, once we reinstate the floor here, but also for this area, and we can get a bedroom back here. We're actually gonna knock through and do a little extension there to give ourselves another meter. So then this whole room moves another meter, leaving the end of the bedroom will probably be about here then. So it'll be a good sized bedroom. And then kitchen diner, sort of meandering through into this room. So we get two beds here, four upstairs. Lovely, lovely. So here is how we're merging these two apartments into one, quite simply. You knock a hole through about here. Block that one up as a window. Up here, I don't think we're getting rid of this breast. That's gonna stay, because we just don't need to. We'll gain like literally that much. This breast's obviously gone now. We'll reinstate that floor. But it's worth doing in, these, in this room, in this side of the house, to give us a square room to work with. Block this off. This breast has gone out. If you take a chimney breast out of property, you then need to put, if you're not taking the pots out as well, so all the way down, which I advise you don't do. You can do it, but then obviously you've got re-roofing work as well and may affect the neighbor's pots, their shared pots, things like that. What we do is break the breasts off all the way into the void in the loft. And then within the loft, we put in gallo brackets. So those gallo brackets are like a structural lintel that goes underneath, usually doubled up concrete lintel. And then underneath you have a steel plate and then steel brackets that are like a triangle that go against the wall and they hold up the chimney pots forevermore. And then you don't need to get rid of the pots, don't need to do re-roofing work 
Uh, but you do need a structural engineer to sign off that detail for the gallo brackets that keeps building control happy. Looking good, looking good. I mean, this is going to be such a big bedroom. Like it's going to pull through from there all the way through here uh, and obviously reinstate that floor. And this is going to be a massive space. So this is going to be another six, six bed HMO. Very happy with it. Six bed HMOs, we're trying to make our go-to now, not only because we don't have to then deal with all the planning of Sweet Generous and the bollocks that comes with it, so we get that speed, but also with these kind of properties, we could get a seventh room in here, we could convert the loft and go for another two, then we've got to make our kitchen slightly bigger, which hampers another bedroom, and then you've got all these tenants sharing one facility. Now, I'm not saying we won't do it, there are properties ideal for it, um, but properties like this, where we could squeeze that extra value out of it, could sweat the asset that, that bit more, but there's then all this other risk that you take on, Whereas with the six bed, we are in and out, nice and easy. We need to get planning to convert the two apartments into one single dwelling. Then we'll exercise our PD rights to turn it into a six bed HMO. That's the only complication here, but pretty straightforward. Strategy. I do think we need a, a mix. It's like going into a suite shop. Yeah. You know, you want optionality. You don't know what you want, but you want a suite. Mm. Yeah, there's the commercial to resis, the biggest schemes, and there's a spectrum of those. And then there's the HMOs. And then there's these more niche ones where something like that if we could convert the commercial and get like two or three apartments out of it, low risk, super easy. Um, and it's trying to get as much of the money out as possible for their yield rather, but lower capex as well in some way, because you don't have to do as much infrastructure, not as many bathrooms, no furniture. We'll go out and view them and, and start getting some kind of data as well, which is where, because that's probably the area that I would go down that Peter route of. Mm. A bit of intel. Me and Dave are uh, looking at commercial properties today. Basically, we're diversifying our strategy so that we can fulfill different investor requirements. Um, so we do a lot of HMOs. We've got the bigger sites, the offices to apartments. But also, we want to look at the more niche stuff where we can get two, three apartments at a time out of either mixed commercial units or uh, larger houses just to diversify from HMOs, so we've got multiple offerings. Some clients come to us and they don't necessarily want to do HMOs, they want to do apartments. They see more longevity in them, which is fine. So we want to make sure that we've got that, we've got our aperture tuned in to uh, finding the right stock for them. So that is the exercise we're going through at the moment. Um, a list of stock, not necessarily the ambition of going to buy any of these, it's purely just to assess what's out there in the market, look at square footage rates, things like that. Always moving, always evolving. Some nice big gaffs, some new builds as well. All nuanced as well, so a lot of private ownership. People would have built their own thing, added and adapted existing buildings. A couple bits for sale, a couple bits of scaffolding. But nice wide street, it's kind of a, feels like you know, a very suburban rural street. There's a pretty cool house, more scaffolding up. Some nice cars as well in the driveways, and we are, but 0.5 miles away from our viewing. We need to see, ideally, some big shops and supermarkets. Um, we try and make sure any of our HMOs, apartments, anything like that is not too far. Either easy bus link, easy metro link, or close proximity, there's a superstore. The nursery, Cheeky Monkey's nursery. Here's some little high street shops. There's a little corner shop there, Premier. Some more little corner shops. And this is the one we're viewing. A little curry house there, a little takeaway. Looks like a relatively okay street, not crazy amounts of rubbish anywhere. Property's looking all right, Nick. Looks like some council houses there. They've got the external render on them or the external insulation. There's another school. Generally, if there's a school like in close proximity, then it's a sign of it being a nicer, more family oriented area. And then at the bottom of this road here, is where it meanders into the town center. I'm not seeing big supermarket, but you'll notice that when we get under this bridge, the railway track, and just behind here is a train station. So that is very close. It's a big win, that. So you get squeezing three bedrooms downstairs or not? Definitely get three upstairs. Yeah. Oh, there's a loft done as well. Yeah, well, well there's a loft, uh, there's a wind, uh, skylight there. Yeah, so you get three upstairs. Five. Definitely get two downstairs. Yeah, but a big two, a big communal. Mm, central communal. Yeah. Bedroom in here. Bedroom in here, which is quite sizable. Yeah. Already got here. You get five bed out of this defo, depending on the loft. If they've done the loft, then you get six bed. Is it boarded? Uh, it's yeah. felted. How many, how many Velux windows up there? 
one. I think the electrics are here. Yeah, just in there. So they've been yeah, been blocked. Okay. Um, Big enough for a room. Bang that divide back in. Punch a hole through here. You can see where there used to be one. There used to be a door there. Pull the breast out. En suite. One bedroom. It's one of those where the extension is really long, great length on it, but it's like 300 mil, too narrow. But it will work. It's just trying to then eat up this landing space here. You can push back in that wall, drop it out of it into the landing. Get an ensuite and then sat in sort of that area there, which then massively increases the size of that room. So you get a bedroom ensuite there. Right, so we're done here. So we know we can get bedroom ensuite downstairs in the front room, move the kitchen from the extension, which is large, into the central reception room, utilizing that little single story extension they've got as a bit of a utility area. Then we'll go our space compliance and it will feel quite nice. And the rest of the ex where the kitchen is now can then be our second bedroom downstairs. Third bedroom here, but pulling all this out and putting that more into the corner. Bedroom back there, that'll be fine. This bedroom's a bit smaller. On its own, it's a great size bedroom. It will be fine, but not enough to get an ensuite in. I mean, we could, but it'll get tight. Um, but we could, we could still put a corner suite in here. And then down here, we can then utilize. We've checked the loft, no go. We could get, if we drop this whole ceiling out and drop in a sixth bed up there, we could do it, but. It's probably not worth it on this prop property. It's just not quite big enough to justify the spend. Whereas here, we can utilize this area, pull out this brick, stick a lintel in, and then we can have a bathroom sat through here. We'll end about there, uh, or we could dog leg it. And then that can be used for this room that's a bit smaller. And as an off suite. And then we have a back to back on the back of it with an en suite, then door open into bedroom here, all chimney breasts out throughout the property. A nice little window to their bathroom as well. It's a lovely view of the sunset. Happy days. We'll not have to fuck around with any extension works or dropping the ceiling out of the loft. The client that we're looking to do this one for um, doesn't want to take on any major risks. So I think a nice, easy, all internal works. Five bed HMO in a good location. I think it'll work nicely. Yeah! And we're back in the office. <laughs> and we've had a mad house today. Pretty much full gang, full bangs or ah, full charades going on over here. Lots of teas were getting made. Uh, it's nice to have a busy office and having Matt here as well. A lot of strategy this week on sales, building out our sales funnel. We've hired two new sales guys as well. Team of six now uh, on our sales side of things. That's for the training business. And then also our new maintenance man has began the work, began the work on finishing off our reveals. Um, Kane's gonna speak with him tomorrow about some bits and bobs. And then next is to tackle that room there. And then our conference room is up and running, which would be nice as well. But anyway, enough shit from me. Hope you're enjoying yourselves. Make sure you've subscribed, leave us a comment. Let us know if there's anything else you wanna see in these videos. Watch this bounce off Kane's belly, look at this. Oh. See you later.